and by following in his way, come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, we now come to our seventh inspiring woman. Our seventh inspiring woman of the Bible and our seventh female speaker. So, Sophie's going to come and bring our last message and she's going to read the Bible reading first. So, thank you. So, I'll go over here, to be honest, for the, the reading. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, today's reading is uh, Acts, uh, so chapter 16, verses 11 to 15. So from Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we travelled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside of the city gate, the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of the women listening was a woman from Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshipper of God. Uh, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptised, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she says, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. Um, so now I'm here today to speak about Lydia as of the book of Acts. So first of all, let us pray. So our Father in heaven, thank you for this time together we have to learn about Lydia. Um, please, I just pray that we all can learn something from this. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so uh, Lydia, so she is a shipper of purple cloth and a worshipper of God. It took me three attempts to get that title, so please appreciate it. Okay, uh, we'll learn about the colour purple more um, as we go on. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is the, as we have seen in the Bible, and then we can, yeah, so I'm going to talk about today who Lydia is, um, the context of this short story in the Bible, and what we can learn from it. Okay, so let me start with who Lydia actually is. So she's a woman who lived in Thyatira, it's in eastern Macedonia, um, and she was merchant selling Tyrian purple cloth by trade. Okay, so Tyrian purple, that is significant. We will learn later on what um, that represents. Yeah, the color purple. And it's a special type of purple, it's called Tyrian, that's um, created from the murex sea snail, with the shell and they grind it down and that's how they create the colour. And actually the more you wash it, the more brighter it becomes. So it gets finer over time. And it was only uh, worn by like the royal people and the who's who, hence why I don't own any purple, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna learn what the purple, that colour means later on. Um, and she's a female entrepreneur, that word is entrepreneurs. So it would have been um, rare during those days. Um, there's no mention of her husband or anything. So, yeah, um, she was wealthy, as you can see, due to the business she ran with the really expensive cloth that she was selling. Um, and also we can tell that because of the house that she owns, um, it was big enough to invite Paul and his group for a year. So that's, we can assume that she was rich from that. Um, and she also gave God thanks for all she had. Now, she was a believer in God, she would often go to the river to pray um, with uh, some of the other women. There was no church um, because you needed to have 10 men to start up this church, but she didn't let that stop her. So we can learn something from that. Yeah. And she, this actually, her house became the first church in Europe. So that's really significant because um, she's from Asia and she lived in Asia. But then the fact that her her house became the first church in modern day Europe. So that's really significant. So the next slide actually has a map, I believe. Yes, uh, this is Thyatira on the map you can see. And the arrows and the numbers is representing Paul's journey and his group of um, apostles with him. So they started in Antioch and they went uh, all around. But you can see 
Thyatira is with the yellow arrow, and Paul and his group, or Paul had this vision from God telling him to go to Thyatira, and that's why the, it was diverted, so his journey. So on the next slide, we can learn a little bit more about the context of this. So yes, so Paul um, did travel to Thyatira. It was like a diversion of the course that he was taking, and he, his group saw Lydia by the river and asked if she knew God. She replied, yes. Um, and then Paul said, do you know Jesus Christ? And she replied, no, not yet. Who is that? And then when Paul explained that in order to know the living God, you need to live your life through Christ, um, this is known as atonement. And then Lydia opened up her heart, and she did receive the message. Okay. And then she was baptized in the river, along with um, the other members of her household, all the women that were there as well. Okay. So yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about the colour purple. So that's the murex, that's the, uh, the sea snail that we get the, the ground from. So it can represent also, um, the colour purple represents God and Jesus as the King of Kings. And also it can represent uh, virtue, spiritual and physical wealth. And I also, when I was doing my research, I did see a link to Proverbs 31 there. I've had to pull out a lot of it and only keep the relevant stuff. There's still quite a lot there, so believe me, I have pulled some stuff out. Um, but as I read it, you can think about how this could relate to Lydia. So, Proverbs 31, um, she worketh willingly with her hands. She riseth also whilst it is yet night. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and of her hands holds the distaff. She maketh herself purple coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. She shall rejoice in time to come. She eateth not of the bread of idleness. So as I was reading that, I'm sure you could see as well how Lydia could be perceived as this woman of God, as of Proverbs 31. Um, and yeah, we have the next slide, so now we can talk about what Lydia's story can tell us. So... Um, she is a minor person in the Bible, as in there's only five lines where she was in, but still we can take a lot from that, which tells us that every single word in the Bible is relevant. All right. So when I was doing this research, did my research, I made the PowerPoint, it was fine. I came to put the final checks to it, and I was like, no, I need to do a bit more digging deeper here. It's a little bit too superficial. So I've got some points that we can learn. So the points in blue are the ones that I, that I came up with first, which are still important, they're still relevant, we can use them. So, giving thanks to God for all our blessings, as Lydia did, okay, which again links to our verse of the air, giving thanks to the Lord for all we have. And we can also learn from Lydia's story that we need to accept Jesus Christ as our saviour, um, which is, yes, relevant, yes, and to spread God's love through kindness and generosity. So Lydia did that when she invited Paul and all of his group to stay at her house for the best part of the year. So that was what I came up with, which they're all relevant. And they all can, they come with um, all of, all our life every day. It's something really relevant. But then digging a little bit deeper, I've, I've learned, I've found out, and I want to share that with you, that God is in charge of all things. We know that, but in this story specifically, um, so, Paul was traveling, and God diverted the journey. So, it tells me that God is in charge of all of those things, okay? So, I don't know if you've ever been on a path in your life. You're on a path. And you find yourself on a different path. Or you're on this path, and you want to go on this path. Or whatever it is, you think, what am I doing? Is this the right thing? And... God is in charge of that, so I'm talking to you a lot about that, but I'm also talking to myself about that. I need to remember that. God is in charge of everything, okay? And also that day that Lydia was at the river. She was at the river most days, but this day in particular, she was there because God knew his plan for her as you are going to accept Jesus Christ as your saviour today at that river. So that's that. And also, obedience. We can learn about obedience through Lydia's story. Okay, so... First of all, Paul was obedient in that he took the vision from God and acted upon it. He didn't just think, 
okay, yeah, that would be cool, but I'm kind of already on this journey. It's not really going to work. No, he followed the journey and the path that God made for him. And then also Lydia was obedient into accepting Jesus Christ as her um, saviour. So again, linking back to, are we obedient to, to God in our lives? Okay, like if we're on like a different path, and God is in charge of it, and we, or we need to be obedient to what God has for us. Okay. And also priorities, yeah. So Lydia, although she runs a really successful business, and she is making a lot of money, um, she's still always putting God first. Okay, and we've got the acronym there, F-I-R-S-T, F standing for finances, I for interests, R for resources and relationships, S for schedule and society, and T for time. So this is another one that I tell myself all the time, I need to put God first no matter what, no matter what the business is or like other people, things like that. So hopefully that is relevant. We can all take something away uh, from this. And then if we look on the next one. Yeah, this is all my references. And then, yeah, you can tell I'm like a teacher. <laughs> and then on the next bit, I just had a little bit, if I had time, a little bit of further discussion. So I just want to talk about Lydia's name. So actually, Lydia was the name of a city in the region where she lived. So whether or not that's her actual name is still up for discussion. But at least she is given a name in the Bible. We've heard that a vast majority of women in the Bible aren't actually even given a name. So the fact that she is given something is really great. And even if she didn't have a name, even if that's just because she was from the city of Lydia, that's still okay because God knows every single one of us um, by name. And just again, um, I would also further discuss about her role and maybe dig a little bit deeper into how she is a Proverbs 31 woman. Um, so that's what I've come up with until now. So maybe after the service, if you have anything further you want to like, discuss with me, anything you think about that, that would be really great. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've all learned something uh, from this. And our next song um, will be Shine, Jesus, uh, Shine. Not because it's my favorite hymn ever, but also because um, so Lydia accepted Jesus Christ as her savior by the river. So it's really important to allow Jesus Christ into all of our lives. Hence, we're going to see that in these lyrics. Okay. So that's our next one. Okay. Thank you. 